Hey, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. We got to talk about it, man. I have to review, break down, analyze, give my quick reactions to what just happened in this Washington football team lost against the Chargers at home, too, might I add. Starting off 0-1, not good. You can honestly probably even say this Giants game is a must win because after the Giants, we play some of the toughest teams in the NFL. I already did like a schedule breakdown and we literally play five of the top eight teams in the NFL in like an eight to 10 game span or something. And then you know we play our entire division. Well, if we play five out of six of our division games to end the season. So like we gotta win these early games. Losing that Chargers game when we were that close hurts a lot. But we'll see how this goes, man. I mean, and then with the Cowboys looking as good as they did against the Buccaneers, and boy, speaking of the Cowboys, we could sure use a Micah Parsons instead of a Jamin Davis right now, boy. I tell you, I think Jamin Davis is still gonna end up being really good. But like I even said before we even drafted him, Jamin Davis is the raw guy. Mark and Parsons comes in day one and can contribute and be your best linebacker. I think Jamin Davis will eventually reach that point. But who? It's not right now. But we're going to dive into all that and more. The Antonio Gibson fumble, this quarterback situation with Taylor Heineke over Fitzpatrick, or even QBX. Do we need to already start talking about franchise quarterbacks? The penalties, the third downs. We're going to talk about all of that and more, but before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. I already had the game day live stream, which I'm having every game this year. We're going to have the post game live stream with this game review in between. That's pretty much how the schedule is going to go all season. So make sure y'all stay tuned for that. Again, game day live streams during the game, a game review like this one, and then an hour after the game ends, if we play from 1 to 4 at 5 p.m., I'll be having a post-game live stream. So make sure y'all pull up for that as well. Let's get it. All right, man, it's just so many things to talk about, bro. So many things went wrong. So many things went wrong. Our defense, when you think about it, it's crazy. Because 20 points allowed to the Chargers sounds like, oh, your defense played pretty well on the surface. People that didn't watch our game would be like, oh, yeah, your defense did a good job. But your defense can't do a good job ever. There's just no range of your defense played well if you allow the charges to convert 14 of 19 third downs compared to our three of 10 too which is even worse i mean we really needed to stop them on third down we allowed them to go four or four on third down conversions in that last drive where we where we just needed our defense to just give us the ball back and give us a chance to win the game and i honestly feel like it was a lot of things it was execution it was the the gibby fumble and it's crazy because antonio gibson had this team on his back the first half he was carrying us he was our only hope in the first half and then he didn't even necessarily have a terrible second half but that fumble was huge after the Williams Jackson interception that fumble was big I mean it literally killed all momentum we didn't even look the same after that but then also Ron Rivera should have gone for that fourth down where we punted it with Tressway with like what four or five minutes left we should have definitely have gone for fourth down right there I'm sorry and then penalties killed us man Brandon Sheriff that one time where Dustin Hopkins missed the 51 yarder first of all if Brandon Sheriff never had that false start that technically would have been a 46 yarder which is manageable because he made a 48 yarder earlier but even worse than that it was a domino effect after that five yard penalty because we were within range of a first down he got us that penalty put us at long distance to the first down and then subsequently afterwards we threw that stupid screen pass to deami brown just to try to get some yards and we lost like two yards on it so that false start by brandon sheriff was a super domino effect and if you think about it, that false start from Brandon Sheriff, if we would have been in closer range for Dustin Hopkins to make that kick, now we're down one. Now that play where I'm mad at Ron Rivera for not going forward on fourth down, we're only down one. We probably get in range to kick a field goal right there and take a two-point lead. Now, granted, our defense couldn't even stop a nosebleed in that last drive, but who knows? It was just a big domino effect from a lot of things. Again, Antonio Gibson's fumble, which led to the Chargers' easiest touchdown of the day in seven of their only 20 points. That was big time, Antonio Gibson. I'm sorry. Again, overall, you didn't have a bad game, but that fumble was huge. And you could even see when they were going through the tunnel that Cole Holcomb and, and 
John Bostic was just trying to cheer him up because he was super down on himself. I was kind of happy to see a little bit of Jared Patterson though. He looked pretty good. He looked like all I thought he would be. So I was happy about that. But overall, that was bad. Also, Jack Del Rio, this zone defense, stop. Please, please stop with the zone. Why are we running soft zone defense? Why? And then how are we running zone defense? We're rushing for, we have seven back, and there's still a guy wide open. Nobody within five yards of him. Several times this game. I mean, our zone defense was atrocious. Guys looked confused. They didn't know who to pick up. Even that last drive, right before the touchdown, it was like Benjamin St. Juice. It was like a crossing route between the receivers, and Benjamin St. Juice was like, I don't, what am I supposed to guard him or him? Or And then it was confusion. There was one big third down we gave up, another one with Benjamin St. Juice. Technically, it was John Bostick's fault, but like Benjamin St. Juice was over top. Should he have come sooner? I mean, we're just not ready to play zone. And even William Jackson, William Jackson is a top man cover corner. Asking him to play zone is difficult as well, but at least he went out there and balled out. He was balling out having pass deflections, forcing incompletions, and then he had that huge interception that almost saved the game, should have saved the game. Antonio Gibson gave it right back. Kendall Fuller looked really bad the first half and then they stopped picking on him they stopped throwing it towards him after that and then just started picking on benjamin st juice and then benjamin st juice looked really bad but benjamin st juice at least he was relatively close when it came to man coverage he was there they were just making really good contested catches against him he just doesn't look ready he needs to get better at jamming receivers at the line because that one touchdown they threw against him in the corner of the end zone it looked like he just barely even jammed the receiver he was able to just get off they had just had perfect chemistry between the quarterback and the receiver you can't allow that you have to get in front of the receiver and disrupt the route so that because the quarterback's throwing it before the receiver's even open he's basically throwing it soon after they snap the ball so as a corner you have to disrupt that route you have to disrupt that timing so that that play doesn't happen it looked like he didn't disrupt them at all and he all he had to do was just go up there and make an easy contested catch technically there's no such thing as an easy contested catch but from what we saw with all of the receivers from the Chargers today even including Jared Cook contested catches were easy for them they were dropping the open ones and then the offensive line bruh I mean they they looked better when Taylor Heineke came in the game but I'm gonna assume that's just because Taylor Heineke was just running and he was more mobile than Ryan Fitzpatrick so the offensive line still probably was just as bad as they were in the first half and while Ryan Fitzpatrick was in there but Taylor Heineke just bailed them out and made them look less bad by running all over the place but boy when Ryan Fitzpatrick was in the game Samuel Cosme was getting all he could handle with Joe with Joey Bosa boy Samuel Cosme's a great run blocker already he's a great run blocker but pass protection man getting killed and I pointed it out during the live stream it looked like Joey Bosa knew our snap count and I'm gonna have to blame Scott Turner on that one or somebody because Joey Bosa was getting off of the line before every other defensive lineman and all of our offensive linemen. I mean, he literally was going right with the snap as if Taylor Heineke and him had communicated prior to the snaps. Like, it literally looked like he knew our snap count better than Samuel Cosme and the other offensive linemen did. I mean, if you go back and look at that game, Joey Bosa, a lot of the great plays he had against Samuel Cosme, it was just excellent ball get off, and it literally looked like he knew our snap count. It was crazy. So, Scott Turner, you got to do a better job of disguising our snap count. You, That's big big time on you because you were out there just leaving Samuel Cosme on the island out there hoping that he can block Joey Bosa who's getting off the ball before he even gets out of his stance like come on Scott Turner Samuel Cosme you still got to take blame for a lot of that you just got to become a better pass protector but hey shouts out to Joey Bosa he bailed us out a couple of times with those roughing the passers one of them the one where you hit low that's still a difficult call I mean, even Tom Brady said it recently, and I've been saying it for a long time now. The reason why I feel like we need a franchise quarterback, the league is literally designed for the offense to always beat the defense. And like Tom Brady said, offensive mistakes become the defense's fault. They get punished for it. And that's just how that goes sometimes. And then Adam Humphreys, I mean, even his penalty where he went low, you got to know the rules now. I'm not sure how he didn't know. I knew from just watching preseason that you can no longer chop block out in the open. I believe offensive linemen may still be able to do it around the line of scrimmage, but I'm not even sure if they can. But I know for a fact when you're out there like on a screen like he was, you cannot chop block. You cannot attack a defender's lower legs to block them anymore. I don't know how he forgot that. I knew that as a fan. So that's just ridiculous right there because that was another penalty that we were moving the ball. We were within field goal range and then he set us back 15 yards. Like you got to do better. It was just a lot of momentum killers, like a lot of moving the ball, doing a good job, and then just something just breaks. And our defense generally was bend but don't break throughout the game, but just some costly plays, it was just bad. And again, 
4 of 19 third down conversions for the opposing offense. I just don't see how you any of those games. Honestly, when you look at the stats, with their 424 total yards to our 259, with their 334 passing yards to our 133, with them converting 14 of their 19 third downs into our 3 of 10, honestly, we should not have only lost by 4 points. That should have been way worse than that. And then it's still crazy because we even with despite all of that, we still had this game at one point. Just a lot of costly big plays. I mean, that was, that's a really weird game to review. I'm not going to lie. I can't wait to watch the film. I'm probably going to have the time to. I plan on watching the All-22 film and then doing a full review and breakdown of what happened so we can truly see. Because right now, this is just a quick reaction. This is just going off of what I saw during the game watching it live. But I'm going to have to take the time to really put people under the microscope and watch them like every snap. Like watch Chase Young every snap and see what, what happened to him. What, what happened to you today? Rashawn Slater, even though he was more so blocking Montez Sweat than Chase Young, Rashawn Slater clearly won the matchup today versus all of them. Chase Young, where were you? Made a couple of plays. Montez Sweat had that nice strip sack that ended up turning into a fumble touchback or whatever. We got the ball. That was huge for us because they were marching down the field and they should have scored. That was when our defense was super bend but don't break. William Jackson interception, Montez Sweat strip sack. Like that was literally bend but don't break god mode for us right there but it's only but so long you can get away with bend but don't break again those third down conversions we were bending a lot 14 of 19 on third downs let me keep saying it because that's ridiculous but like we, we were able to bail ourselves out sometimes on defense but when you keep bending you keep bending eventually you're gonna break it's just it's gonna happen and i mean there's this whole argument about franchise quarterback and i mean i think it's obvious taylor heineke was good but he wasn't justin herbert if we switch quarterbacks, we win that game. I don't care even with the mistakes from Antonio Gibson, penalties. They should have called those face masks. That was the, that one time we kicked the field goal. That face mask on Antonio Gibson should have been called. They didn't call it. We ended up kicking the field goal. That could have been seven points. Could have been the entire difference in the game. But this franchise quarterback thing, I'm telling y'all because I've been saying it for a while now. These mobile franchise quarterbacks are looking good. I mean, if you saw Kyler Murray look like the best quarterback in football today, Justin Herbert literally i would say their receivers outplayed us i wouldn't say running back i wouldn't even necessarily their offensive line outplayed us but they did max protections a lot it was really just the receivers out there somehow getting open against our stupid soft zone that jack the was calling they just didn't look ready to run whatever zone he was trying to run but joe burrow looks good today trevor lawrence and zach wilson had their ups and downs but overall they had some nice days trey lance even had a pretty decent day his first pass in the nfl was a touchdown i was happy about that but like justin herbert literally just outplayed us he won this game for them justin herbert was just near perfect he was the difference in the game again taylor heineke i'm not blaming him because he did well but even though that that terry mclaurin amazing play that was a terrible throw by taylor heineke you got to live with those though sometimes he just gets lucky and ends up being a big play for us instead of the defense but like that was a really bad throw but again overall taylor heineke had a good game but he wasn't justin herbert justin herbert is special it's just man when you got a quarterback like that anything is possible again our team is better than theirs up and down if you look on paper we're better than them justin herbert and mistakes were the difference in this game again they outplayed us 14 of 19 on third downs i told y'all i'm gonna keep saying it they outplayed us the fact that we only lost by four points is a miracle to me but the franchise quarterback thing is a real thing taylor heineke was clearly better than anything we got from ryan fitzpatrick he got us into the red zone he was moving the ball up and down through that nice pass to logan thomas i love that pass and and taylor heineke's good i'm not saying he's bad but Taylor Heineke is not the goal. Justin Herbert is the goal at quarterback. That's what we want at quarterback. What we have at Taylor Heineke is really good. But Taylor Heineke should not be your goal. That's not we have our franchise quarterback right there. Again, I love Taylor Heineke, but you want a Justin Herbert. You shoot for Justin Herbert. Because, again, Justin Herbert made us pay, man. Again, not blaming Taylor Heineke, but Justin Herbert was the better quarterback. And Justin Herbert pretty much carried that team. The receivers and Justin Herbert carried that team. Again, I mean, it's so weird when you look at it in the surface because our defense gave up only 20 points to one of the most potent offensive attacks in the nfl but when you really look at it on a micro scale and look at every individual moment every individual stat overall our defense did not play well they got turnovers when they needed to and again overall allowing 20 points again to one of the best offenses in the nfl sounds good on the surface but you got to do better in, in clutch situations most notably third downs and benjamin st juice we need more out of you first of all you know what we need more of terry mclaurin targets did he go the entire first half without a target i don't know he may have 
But outside of that crazy throw to Terry McLaurin, again, that honestly should not have been thrown. That was a really bad throw. Taylor Heineke got lucky. Great play by Terry McLaurin definitely going on the ESPN top 10 but other than that he only had three targets he had four targets total today that's unacceptable I don't care what the defense is doing schematically to take Terry McLaurin out of a game you can't convince me he wasn't open some plays that y'all just didn't throw it to him and either way you figure out how to get him open crossing routes rub routes whatever Terry McLaurin should be getting more than four targets a game he's our best offensive player period and then Montez Sweat was interesting because he had that one great play but like he didn't play much I don't believe he played any on that final drive if he did it wasn't much and then even like to start the game in the first quarter like the first couple of drives Casey Tuhill and James Smith Williams were coming in the game in place of him so does Montez Sweat have some injury that we just don't know about or something I don't know that's a really weird situation right now I don't exactly understand why Montez Sweat just didn't play much and again defense overall we expected y'all to be a top five defense in the nfl arguably the number one defense i mean people even outside of burgundy and gold nation like espn analysts nfl network analysts a lot of people that have nothing to do with this organization felt like we were going to have the best defense in the nfl and y'all did not go out there and look like it today again on the surface allowing 20 points to one of the best offenses in the nfl sounds like they stepped up but they really didn't it was a lot of bend but don't break and then sometimes they broke and they broke enough for us to lose this game granted offense made their fair share of mistakes Mistakes. offensive line Charles Leno who he's the reason Ryan Fitzpatrick got hurt our worries about him in the preseason stand tall I don't understand why Cornelius Lucas isn't playing because he was very solid last year that's why I felt like we didn't need to draft an offensive tackle in the first round because we had Cornelius Lucas and now he's coming off the bench behind Charles Leno who I feel like Cornelius Lucas can be playing better than right now and against Sam Cosme it was a tough task going against Joey Bosa all game looked really good in run blocking but pass blocking like I already said Joey Bosa looked like he knew the snap count and even when he didn't he was just too fast and too smart for Samuel Cosme as of today I think Samuel Cosme after that he only got better and we started to hear Joey Bosa's name less and less as the day went on. So Samuel Cosme kind of bounced back. But overall, we still need better from him. Again, Brandon Sheriff, you sold. Uh, that, I mean, not the whole game, but though, though, that penalty, man, hurt. But shouts out to William Jackson, man. One of the very few bright spots on the defense, honestly. Jonathan Allen made a couple of plays. Matt I and I mean, overall, our defensive line was getting held like crazy. And I like the fact that Jonathan Allen and his presser said that even when they're max protection, we still got to get there. There's no excuses. But, like, they were getting held. They were getting doubled a lot so like I still expect more out of the defensive line especially Chase Young I don't know where you were a lot of that game but like honestly our secondary has to hold up better our linebackers bro John Bostic was lost out there as I expected I don't remember ever hearing Jamin Davis name I don't even remember seeing him on the field I gotta look at this all 22 to see what he contributed at all Cole Holcomb looked a little bit better but he wasn't great it's just overall man just a bad game Again, I'm surprised we only lost by four points. When you really realize everything we went through, look at all of the individual stats, look at all of the crazy stats team by team, and you think of a score in your head like, oh yeah, that, that was probably like 30 to 12, 30 to 13 or something like that. And then you look up, the final score was 20 to 16. You're like, how? How did Washington keep that game that close? And honestly, still looking at it, I'm not exactly sure. But again, I'm gonna watch the all 22 and come out probably with a film session on a player or two we'll see maybe a, maybe a couple of film sessions but i definitely want to do an official game review and after watching the all 22 fil film game review type of thing but yeah man that's the end of this quick analysis just wanted to give y'all some of my thoughts oh before we go deandre carter thank goodness you're here oh man him on punt return has been a huge help we haven't had a punt returner to the caliber of a DeAndre Carter in a while. I think he's definitely going to break one off this season, one or two, because it looks like he was so close several times. So DeAndre Carter is a big help for us right now. And then even beyond that, Tress Way, still one of the most consistent, best players on the team. I appreciate you. So shouts out to the special teams. The special teams is not what's holding us back this time. It's the defense and the offense. So we got to do better. Last year, special teams were selling us because outside of Tress Way, really wasn't much hope. But now we actually have a return game, but it wasn't enough. So it's crazy. We improved in a lot of areas going from last year to this year. But then it's like we, we fixed a few things and then a few things that weren't broken last year ended up broken today. I don't know why. Like we, we fixed some things we had wrong and then other things broke. You fixed the leg of a toy and now the arms broke for some reason. That's how it kind of ended up being. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please pull up for the post game live stream soon. 
I will catch y'all there. Just make sure y'all call into the show. That's how it's set up. Y'all call in, voice y'all opinions. I'm not going to do too much talking. I'm just going to be moderating. So I'm just going to be hosting, really. And of course, man, I appreciate all of the support, man. Shouts out to everybody that donated today. I believe Jaden was the one that donated the most. So I got to give you a special shout out, man. Definitely got to, man. Shouts out to everybody that donated and supported the channel today. That was big time. I really appreciate y'all. Great opening stream. Not a great opening game, but a great opening stream. Also, shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. You may be see scrolling on the screen right now. Shouts out to all of the new sponsors as well, man. I really appreciate all y'all. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.